Hello, um, my name's Elise Brogan. I'm a GP in Derbyshire. I'm doing a GP fellowship and um, supporting GPs who are off work. And obviously with the COVID pandemic, um, there's a lot of GPs off at the moment. Very kindly, um, Gail has agreed to have a chat with me. It's Friday the 3rd of April. Um, and would you mind introducing yourself, Gail? Hi, that's fine. I'm Gail Walton. I'm a GP in um, Ilkeston in Erewash. I've been there 30 odd years and I also work with Derbyshire LMC and the GP task force and do some GP appraisal work. Brilliant, thank you Gail. So um, thank you very much for agreeing to talk over some of the updates and the things that are happening again this week. There are things happening every day so it is nice to just touch base and just go over a few of those. The first thing we were going to mention, can I just ask you about the crem uh, cremation forms and the death certificates, what's happened there? So we've had more clarity this week as you've probably all picked up on. Uh, if I start with crem forms, uh, I think we talked last week about the fact that only one doctor now needs to sign the cremation form. Mm -hmm. There's been some guidance, some uh, helpful tips. One side of, of paperwork come out in the last day or two by the Chief Medical Officer for Derby Crematoria, Dr Ian Ferrer. That's well worth finding on the LMC website and I think you might be cascading that as well, uh, saying what doctor um, needs to, to fill in that that form you need to be just very clear some, some simple tips some clear um, cause of death mm -hmm. and all these things normal things you put on the first part of the, the crem form verification of death again you'll be aware it's been extended to 28 days prior to, to death so if you've seen patient and that doesn't need to be face to face anymore that can be through a video consultation then that is acceptable we talked about um, video consultations last week i think briefly i think there's more itt resource coming through into general practice almost on a daily basis so i hope that there'll be more access to to that mm. we talked though about um, death certification um, again the Derby coroner we've had conversations the LMC chief exec has been having close conversations with the Derby coroner and a positive case as a course of death is acceptable on the death certificate uh, a suspected case can't be put on the death certificate as part one you would need to to talk to the coroner's office but if it's somebody with a pneumonia that could be part that could be one part a and one part b could be covid related illness okay thank you thanks for just bringing those points up so uh, yes i will try and email around the um the piece of paper that you've recommended with that extra details and the other thing we did just talk about briefly before wasn't it was about virtual ward rounds in nursing homes to enable doctors to have seen those patients without having gone there physically um, so I think that that might be useful for practices looking into the next few weeks the other thing we were going to talk about was palliative care yeah so we've had a few good documents coming round two that spring to my mind one uh, is the derbyshire based end of life care guidelines prepared by pauline love pauline's a gp in bakewell and is a macmillan gp and a lead for end of life care she's put a lot of thought and time into assimilating all the national guidelines and has come up with a very clear document to read the most helpful part of it for me, I think, was about usages of drugs because I was feeling that a lot of patients that we'll be looking after in the community with COVID related illness may be relatively opiate and other palliative care drug naive. So, quite looking after people where we've got 
a number of days over which we increase drug doses and what seems to be coming through is it may not be like that in uh, COVID related palliation. It may be that we don't actually need to use syringe drivers and there is talk in, in that document and in other national guidelines about the use of bolus uh, treatments. I suppose it's going to be a balance, isn't it? Bolus treatment obviously take up more nursing visits and nursing input and sometimes the patient isn't as comfortable. Uh, so syringe driver doses are really helpful for me to know. It's a bit like that scenario that of the crash trolley. If you've got your doses in front of you, you're less likely to panic and you know it's been thought through and you can think it through with some guidance so have a look at that the other um document and i think again it's on the lmc website but i think you you're probably going to circulate it is one prepared locally again i think by someone working at ashgate hospice and i'm just going to look at my notes it's called um the good practice guide for care homes and again quite lengthy i think it runs to about 20 pages but a lot of good good advice in there obviously more to share with with care homes for their reference but equally some good points in there for us as, as gps mm. and i think some of the um the dosing it's quite useful to print out some of those um sheets isn't it and just have them with you at work so if you do need to refer you, you've got it right there well that's what I find I like to have it physically um, that's brilliant about palliative care thank you for that the other thing that has changed a little bit this week is PPE and what we should be expecting in terms of PPE over the next week or two coming into the practices could you say anything about that the mantra no PPE no C still stands very very clearly practices are getting supplies of PPE in and um, we've got reassurance that through the NHS channels that will be be coming through yeah. so full PPE for that very small proportion of patients that you do end up seeing and I'd reiterate that it should be a small proportion mm -hmm. although numbers are going to increase in terms of symptomatic covid patients we should be seeing a very small proportion of patients that we um, are presenting through 111 or through our own telephone triage yeah and it's um it's going to be eye protection now isn't there as well as everything else as well as the gloves and the mask and the and the apron yeah yeah. yeah okay thank you for that um the other thing i just thought to mention was i have got a few emails about them not using the roth score did you see those yes and i think there's been some talk in in different forums hasn't there nationally that it's perhaps not as accurate or as helpful as mm. it might be i think again it's it's about a rounded view of our clinical judgment isn't it it's it's in any consultation we do on any day of the week it's it's joining that up it's using your clinical acumen albeit now it's it's going to often be at a distance and under pressure different pressures that we've perhaps not experienced before so I think the Roth score, probably not to use it as a sole reason for making a decision, but look at the other factors that are open to you. And I know that the drive through Red Hub facilities that will be coming through, dependent on PCN geography, etc., will have the ability to gain a set of observations for us. That was the other thing we were going to mention, wasn't it? Was the um, Red Hub, the kind of expectations over the next few weeks about what will ha be happening with those and the testing. Yeah, and I think that's something we can perhaps return to next next week. Red Hub working and staff testing are very much going to be 
coming online in the next week and we'll look at those guidelines and the information coming through and be able to to dissect or have a conversation about it yeah brilliant okay that's great thank you very much gail is that i think we've, we've kind of covered everything we wanted to wasn't with today um, and if we yeah if we pick up again next week that'd be great and just see see what the next few days bring us yeah well the weather forecast is set for good again i think tomorrow so please get out get some exercise get some fresh air eat well sleep well <laughs> eat well <laughs> look, look after ourselves yeah that's really important yeah it is thank you very much gail i really appreciate your time thank you